In this video, I'm going to be talking about my four base shaker tests and installation in my home cinema. Firstly, we've got the unit here, which is the Dayton Audio's BSA 200 watt base shaker amplifier. This unit is a 230 watts RMS at four ohms bridge mono mode. So I'm running this where I'm going to have four of the Aura Sound AST 2B4 Pro Bass Shakers, tactile transducers, and they're a 50 watt at 4 ohm impedance unit. The Dayton Audio Amplifier is optimized for bass shakers, and I've got this running from a mini DSP 2x4 HD unit. There's also a remote for the volume, and also an auto on when a signal is detected mode. Here's the remote. It's got a really long cable with it, which is handy and it's purely just got a power button and a volume dial. The way that I've got this connected is with four base shakers, I wanted to maintain the four ohm load. So therefore I use the bridged mono installation and I've got it running in a series parallel wiring configuration. I've seen a few different variations of how to do that. For me, this was the simplest way to understand it. I used the Dayton Audio instructions and I use the diagram here. And that was so that I could have a total of 200 watt load on the amplifier and also stay in a four ohm load overall. I sourced the Dayton Audio amplifier and the Aura Sound bass shakers all from Parts Express. As for the front of the Dayton Audio amplifier, there's purely just a power button, a frequency range where you can just set it down to the lowest crossover level, a left right balance, you can either use the volume here or plug in the remote. The mounting options are some side brackets to mount it underneath, or you can use on the corners for, you'd have to have a very small rack or put onto a rack shelf. I chose the Aura Sounds after looking at the reviews of both these as well as the Dayton Audio BST ones, but I felt like these had a little bit more kick to it essentially. And I wanted to test this out before I installed them into the seats themselves. I wanted to see that one that was going to work, but I also wanted to see the best way to wire it so I could also work out then the length of speaker cable that I needed to do it, as well as to work out the best location where I'm going to mount the Dayton Audio amplifier. It's not going in my rack, it's actually going inside the room on the back wall. And I'm going to be running speaker wire back through my riser to get to the front seats. In my test here, I just got some fairly cheap 14 gauge wire. I'm gonna change that in my final configuration to a 16 gauge wire, because in order to wire up for the series parallel and get them into the binding post connectors, the 14 gauge was just too large. So from this angle, this is the same layout as what I'm gonna show you in the diagram. So when we get into this diagram here, that is the same way that I've laid out the base shakers. I've got my RCA cable which is the final cable, which is SVS subwoofer cable. I've got that running to the left channel. And then I've got two wires going into the positive connection on the unit. And that's so we can get into a mono mode, bridge mono mode. This is my understanding of the unit. I'm not anywhere near an expert on this, but this is the way that I've just understood it. These two, the base shakers here, are essentially what would be running in a series. These two over here, uh, what makes it a series parallel and that's based on how we're going to wire it the connection coming through on the right hand side We're going through from the positive connection and that's running to the positive connection here from that same positive the wire running to the positive on the left bottom shaker we've then got the connection between the positive and the negative of this base shaker to connect those. Next, we're gonna connect the speaker wire from the right speaker out connector on the amplifier, which shown here is on the left-hand side. And we're gonna make that from the positive connector back to the negative connection on the top right base shaker. Then we're gonna do another wire also from that same negative connector back to the negative connector on the base shaker 
shown at the top left. And then we go from the positive of the top left base shaker back to the negative of the bottom left base shaker. That then completes all the wiring we've got in the series parallel configuration. The tricky bit again just using 14 gauge was getting two wires into the binding post. So 16 gauge should fix that problem. And now we're going to run some tests. So there's two tests. Overall, there was a really nice rattle coming from these. It really helps just seeing it without being connected to the chair, so you can see how much it's actually moving. Part two will be coming up where I'm gonna install these into my cinema, and then we'll do some more tests to see how well they respond. Thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe for more home cinema videos coming soon.